Hello and welcome to the B4B update for September 1st and that means the transfer window is finally shut and uh, yeah today it's gonna be a quick B4B update because it's already very late here and I don't have that much time however of course uh, the bit of news that we have we're gonna cover we're of course going to predict tomorrow's lineup and uh, get it wrong as always and I'm gonna quickly raid the transfer window and i'm also very interested in what you guys think of dortmund's transfer window so uh, yeah let's dive in and starting once again with manuel akanji because uh, he is now officially a manchester city player and uh, maybe just quickly uh that his transfer fee of course i think 18 million euros of a base fee was 17 and a half and uh, Sport1 and Der Westen both report that they can go up until up to 23 million in bonuses and last words of Manuel Akanji. Well, not last words, but you know what I mean. Um, he said at Borussia Dortmund's website, quote, As a sportsman and a father, I had a wonderful and formative time in Dortmund that I will never forget. I would especially like to say a heartfelt thank you to the Borussia Dortmund fans and my teammates for their support over the past years. I've enjoyed playing in front of the yellow wall and will always be happy to come back to the Westfalen Stadion. We'll see each other soon in the Champions League anyway, which of course is correct. And with that, I guess I can quickly rate the Borussia Dortmund transfer window and uh, my number out of 10 is a 7 out of 10. Um, obviously, as you can see here in the departures, um, is I think everyone's main gripe. First of all, uh, losing Erling Haaland, probably the best or second best striker in the world. Um, for 16 million, uh, even though it was a release clause, hurts one way or another. Uh, Manuel Akanji for under 20 million, I think, is also uh, you know just simply too low. And Stefan Tigges, uh, 1.5 million. Yeah, I don't know if that's worth mentioning. Um, the good things are that Axel Witzel is gone because um, as much as this transfer made sense in the beginning, now it's good that he is uh, gone because uh, he made way too much money for what he had to offer and his drop in pace simply made him unviable for Borussia Dortmund. Roman Bürki, of course, uh, needed to go as well just because Gregor Kobel is uh, yeah, the number one goalkeeper now and uh, there are no ways around it. Marvin Hitz seeked a new challenge and then Axel Zagadou. I think it's a bit of a tragic story really because uh, very bright talent but uh, with all these injuries uh, there was just no perspective and... Um, yeah, getting rid of Rainje and Marin Pongracic and having their loans end uh, also makes sense because they never really did anything for Dortmund, to be honest. So uh, in that regard, that also makes sense. But uh, yeah, you would obviously love to see more players on this list. Say Nico Schulz, say Emre Can, probably Torgen Azar and maybe even Julian Brandt. Although I'm a bit on the fence uh, on on uh, Julian Brandt, to be honest, still, I would still get to give him a little bit more time. But uh, yeah, when it comes to the fullback situation and, um, you know, a couple of squad players that Dortmund have retained, um, yeah, it's not ideal. And on the other hand, um, when we look at the arrivals and why it's a 7 out of 10 and, uh, you know, because it, it could definitely be lower <laughs> since Emre Can and uh, Nico Schulz are still sticking around. And I think there are a couple of other key uh, positions that Dortmund haven't really addressed. But um, what they have done excellently is uh, replacing their center backs and uh, bringing in Nico Schlotterbeck, I think, is amazing because he is a very confident young man. He is already playing really well. And I don't recall a center back really trying to defend his own goal as much as maybe Nevin Zubotic. So uh, in, in that regard, um, I think he has already won the hearts and minds of most Borussia Dortmund fans and he's only going to improve from here on out. And uh, yeah, Charlie Oshan also looks like the deal that Dortmund needed in defensive midfield because his player profile exactly fits. And uh, I would say try to find another player type like that uh, in the future. So you have a backup for Oshan. Niklas Süle, I think, is also a really good piece of business even though he did not have the best start to the season but um, you know it can still uh, work out I think Lotka and Meyer are very good goalkeeper backups for uh, Hits and Birki of course and then uh, yeah let's talk about the attackers a little bit because Sebastian Alea, um 31 million Dortmund's most expensive signing I think is a really great fit for Borussia Dortmund However, uh, this tragic diagnosis of a testicular tumor now has derailed that entirely and thus 
Anthony Modest is also a Dortmund player, and uh, yeah, this he's still trying to find his feet, um, and it's a bit of a desperation move, no doubt, for Dortmund, so I'm not going to have the overall rating influence this particular transfer too much just because, uh, you know, it was never really planned to happen to begin with. And yeah, the only question mark I really have this window is Karim Adeyemi because uh, A, he was very expensive. B, of course, he's very fast and whatnot, but I'm not entirely sure what position he's supposed to cover because he's not entirely a winger, but he's also not an out-and-out -out striker. He's something in between. And I would say from the player profile, maybe a bit too similar to Daniel Malen. So uh, considering that Dortmund probably have to add true wingers to their team, um, I'm not entirely on board with this transfer and considering that he's still struggling a lot with his finishing as well. Um, it's a transfer where I'm not entirely convinced yet. So what does Dortmund have to do still? I would say fullback positions is probably the most pressing issue. Um, there were a lot of rumors concerning Thomas Meunier which is all nice and well, but uh, you also want rumors uh, concerning an actual alternative for the right back and ideally also for the left back position, but uh, that also includes uh, offloading Nico Schulz, of course, and uh, for the right back position, I think Dortmund need to find a long-term solution and I think this is on Kiel's uh, priority list going into the next transfer window or the next summer because uh, he said it himself, uh, he has a significant overhaul to moderate, but uh, also said that he cannot do everything in one season, and that is, of course, understandable. I think Dortmund have done their homework on the most important positions. Like I said, centre-back and central midfield um, looks very good already, and uh, yeah, the attack really is where I have a couple of head scratches because everything sort of seems a bit patchworky. And uh, in terms of player profiles, I feel like there are a couple of different player profiles that you still need to acquire. Um, maybe a couple more dribblers that can win 1v1 duels because with Jimmy Bino Gittens you have one, but he's still very, very young. And uh, maybe the whole phase of the attack looks also a bit different once Gio Reyna is back. But um, yeah, Torgen Hazard is not getting any younger and uh, he is not you know, putting out the numbers that Dortmund want to see of him. Julian Brandt remains a polarizing character and also an interesting player. But, uh, you know, before I waffle on, just tell me in the comments what you think that Dortmund needs to do in the next transfer windows, what your frustrations are maybe with this transfer window and what you think, um, you know, has worked out well. Because I think there, there are criticism and praise warranted Either way, but uh, yeah, let's move on to the <laughs> lineup prediction because uh, there is a game tomorrow as well. And uh, surprise, surprise, Gregor Kobel, I see in goal against his former club and Rafael Guerrero and Marius Wolf as the fullbacks again. I think when it comes to the center backs with Schlotterbeck and Hummels, there are also no surprises. And there's also one piece of news here about Dahoud today uh, from Jesko von Eichmann from the training ground earlier where he said that Dahoud missed the final team training and he's most likely unavailable tomorrow against Hoffenheim, which is uh, pretty much certain. But at the same time, he said that uh, Adeyemi at least featured in the final team training. So I think after Oshan and Bellingham played really well against Hertha, uh, either way, it would make a lot of sense to play both together again in midfield and uh, as we've already previewed on the yellow wall pod uh, behind Angelino from Hoffenheim there is space to exploit and I think the best player to do that is actually Adeyemi even though I just criticized him a little bit so I would still put him in the starting lineup if he's fit to play and uh, yeah Marco Reus also played really well against Hertha Berlin even though um, I would have hoped for maybe a goal here or there, but can't have it every time. And so Julian Brandt, also a bit frustrating, but what worked really great actually against Hertha is that he and Guerrero found each other quite well, especially Guerrero um, finding Brandt in the half spaces um, and giving Brandt the opportunity to frustrate fans because he was in a lot of space, worked out well. And going by how Eden Tessic spoke of Anthony Modest during the news conference ahead of the game, it sounds very much like he's going to start. So um, as much as I also want to see Mokoko get more playing time, I assume that this is the lineup that uh, we are going to see tomorrow. But, uh, you know, it would also not surprise me if A, another surprise injury emerges and B, Eden Tessic has other ideas. But uh, yeah, that is it 
for today. Maybe a little bit sloppier than uh, usual, but uh, you know, it's also pretty late here. So um, yeah, anyway, thank you very much for watching, for tuning in. As always, like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Enjoy the game tomorrow. Goodbye.